Hello and welcome to Middle Eastern Thursdays. So today, guys, I am so excited because I have quite a bit to share with you. Let me tell you what we're going to be up to today. So first, we are going to do a little bit of catching up because I have quite a number of things to share with you. Then we're going to jump right into the fragrances because today I have 15 fragrances that I will be reviewing for you. Some of these fragrances are just me circling back with you following our first summer and spring fragrances haul. These are fragrances that you requested that I review for you, so I have definitely brought them all back. Then there's also some fragrances that I had picked up and that I had started to test and that I think are perfect for spring and summer seasons. So you've never seen these fragrances in any of our previous hauls, and I am just so excited to share them with you. The third group are fragrances that were a part of previous hauls, but not necessarily the summer and spring hauls. But I brought them back because I think that they are perfect for the spring and summer seasons. And I'm also ready to give you all of the details that you need. But if this is your first time here, I'm Rahi. And in this channel, we love to talk about fragrances, makeup, and fashion. I upload videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sundays, and sometimes you even get a bonus video for the week. If that sounds like the type of content that you're interested in, and that sounds like a good plan, well then please consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget, leave a comment. Let's go. The first thing that I want to share with you today is that our moth has a new collection. This collection is called Miss Armoff, and there's a total of eight fragrances in the collection. All of these fragrances come in very beautiful bottles. As you can see, they are quite ornate. The concept of this collection, and I will quote, is only the most fashionable fragrances for the most beautiful girls in the world. So obviously this is going to be a collection of fragrances that's not designed to be unisex, but rather all feminine fragrances. From my research, there's quite a range of types of fragrances. Some of the names of the fragrances are also quite interesting. There's, for example, Magnifique, and there's also Dazzling. I went ahead and was able to find a retailer that is getting ready to make them available. And I put in my order for three of the fragrances that based on the notes really caught my attention. Expect to see these fragrances here and being reviewed, of course, very soon. The second thing that I wanted to share with you, and it's just me making sure that I make you aware of findings during testing and some of the feedback that I'm receiving from other fam members. So you know that collection from Cadlash, uh, Maison collection, where I've talked to exhaustion about my favorite, which is called Floor Oud? Well, that collection, I just want to make sure that you are aware that that collection is absolutely exquisite, guys. The quality of the ingredients that have been used for the fragrance, it is very clear to me that it's like a different level of a fragrance. And I was able to get a decant of the other three. And based on that, I went ahead and I ordered two more because the third one was just a bit too masculine for my taste. And that's the one that's called Rev Something. But the other two I definitely ordered. So then I will definitely have three out of the four fragrances that came out in that collection. But I can tell you, and the reason I'm bringing it to your attention is because I would really hate for it to sell out before you realize that these fragrances were really special and different. I will link 
all of the fragrances in the description box for you as always and it's really you know your choice if you try to get a decant or a sample or you just go ahead and order the fragrances but I really really highly recommend them and I felt that I needed to make sure that I brought them to your attention again the third thing that I wanted to share with you is just a reminder that today is the last day for you to be able to enter our 5k giveaway I also wanted to remind you that I will be announcing the winner next week most likely I will be announcing the winners on the Tuesday video and the Thursday video so get ready and good luck to all of you the third and last catch-up item that I have for you today is more of a question slash kind of favor so I've been thinking for a while now about resuming makeup content on the channel but I wanted to ask you is that something that you really are interested in are you interested in me bringing and creating makeup content as part of the programming within the channel and if you are interested in makeup content what type of content would you like are you looking for makeup videos that are more like tutorials? Are you looking for makeup videos where I'm reviewing specific products? What is it that you are interested in? The one thing I will share with you is that, of course, I am an absolute makeup lover. That's actually how I started this channel. And I have quite a vast collection of makeup and I do enjoy it on an almost everyday basis. It's something that really takes my mind away just like fragrances from everything else so I do love it. But if I am to resume makeup content on the channel I do want you to know, those of you that have been with me from the beginning, that I, I really don't want to go back to hunting and pursuing and chasing down the latest release of every for the most part every single brand i really want to develop content that's a bit more meaningful not that i'm saying that if you do that it's not meaningful it's just that i'm looking for more purpose behind it if you know what i mean Nonetheless, I really appreciate your giving me your feedback and your opinion on my resuming makeup content in the channel. Most likely, I would have makeup once a week because I will continue to do fragrances. Okay, so those were all the updates for this week and uh, let's get right into these fragrances. So I want to start with a very interesting collection of fragrances that um, I picked up probably about three weeks ago and I had never heard of them. I was just roaming around looking for items that had gone out of stock and I wanted to make sure, you know, that I just took a look to see if I could find them for you. And I ran into this collection of fragrances. I read about them. I did a little bit of research and I immediately picked them up. So today I want to share with you the Ithra Dubai collection. And this collection is by Ard Al Safaran. I can never say that name, but I hope I didn't butcher it. But anyway, so this collection has four bottles, four different fragrances, and they are all musk based fragrances. There's a pistachio one, there's a cotton candy one, there's a pomegranate, and last, there's a mango. I've had the opportunity to wear them each for a full day of testing and I am going to go ahead and talk about them individually but I want you to know from the beginning that they are all musk based fragrances and I'll tell you all about them and I'll also give you my opinion on use etc but I do want to share with you that even though they are available and sold individually and I will link that for you below um, it is much more cost efficient if you pick up all four as part of a collection and the savings is quite significant it's almost like 50% if you pick up the entire collection 
But let's go ahead and get into the fragrances and then you can decide if you're even interested. All right, so before I start sharing with you uh, some information about each one of the fragrances individually, let me tell you as a whole what I found to be the common ground for these four fragrances. So for me, let me just start by saying these are all musk-based fragrances. And for me, it's almost like uh, like the smell of your skin if you added just a touch of a scent of pomegranate or just a touch of a scent of like pistachio or mango or cotton candy. So it's definitely for me a very appropriate spring and summer, especially summer type of fragrance. But you can also use them all throughout the year. These fragrances for me are definitely unisex. You can use them during the day, you can use them at night. As I said, I recommend them from all, all seasons, but I really think they're best suited, that's just personally, for spring and summer. These fragrances have a moderate projection and sillage, and they also give me a solid five hours before I have to respray. Now consider the fact that these fragrances have only been with me for about three weeks, so they have not had a chance to sit and or macerate, right? So I think that they will definitely pick up some more oomph as they sit. But even if they only gave me a five hour wear consistently, even after they've had the opportunity to sit, I think I'm not mad at it. I think I'm quite satisfied because they are very, very affordable. And to me, these are the perfect fragrances that you would use for very, very warm days where you do want to have a certain kind of smell, but you don't want anything that's too overpowering. So let's say, for example, that you're going to the beach or you're going with a pair of shorts and a t-shirt and some sneakers and you're getting on your bike and you're going bike riding or you're going to the park for a picnic or any type of outing that involves being in very, very warm temperatures and most likely being outside. These are fragrances that will definitely make you smell good, and I'll talk more about them in a minute, without being offensive or overpowering or just a bit or a tad too much for the temperature of the day. So let me start by talking about pistachio. So this is pistachio musk. And as you can see, look at this bottle closely. So this bottle has that very peculiar tassel. It's like this little thing doesn't know if it wants to be a tassel or not. But anyway, so this is the pistachio one. So this fragrance, before you even think about it, has nothing to do and no similarity whatsoever to the Yum Pistachio Gelato from Kayali or Pistachio Kair or other pistachio fragrances that I know that you're aware of. This is a very unique pistachio fragrance because it really is heavy on the musk. This is definitely a musk-based fragrance. This fragrance opens quite faint, like with a very faint musk and just a tad, a tad of the scent of pistachio. But once you spray it on your skin and it starts to interact with your skin chemistry, you will find that this fragrance will become pretty live with that like pistachio macaroon type of scent. It is a very, very beautiful fragrance, but it's not designed to be beast mode or to really make much of a statement. It's just like your skin, but like with a scent of like a pistachio macaroon. And that smells quite lovely. At the dry down, you are going to get a very, very beautiful vanilla infused with that like pistachio, which has now intensified a bit more. And then you're going to have like a base of like a musky rose. I give this fragrance a 9 out of 10 and only because I just feel like the opening could have been a little bit better. 
you definitely have to spray this fragrance on your skin to get that effect that I described for you. So the next one that I'm going to talk about from this collection is the Pomegranate Musk. The Pomegranate Musk is actually my favorite. And at the end of reviewing all four for you, I will definitely tell you which is my favorite all the way down to my least favorite. But I can already tell you that this one is my favorite. It opens with a very realistic and bright, juicy pomegranate. This is very refreshing, fruity, very, very refreshing fruity and sweet, like with a touch of tartness to it. I have to tell you that the fruity, musky nature of this fragrance at times gives me like Tiziana Terenzi vibes, but please do not be confused. I am not saying that this is very similar or maybe inspired by a Tiziana Terenzi fragrance. No, I'm just saying that that musk and fruity vibe that I get in this fragrance does remind me at some point points of a Tiziana Terenzi kind of DNA. But at the end of the day, they're not the same. This fragrance to me is exclusively, exclusively feminine. There is nothing unisex to me about this fragrance. I can't imagine a man wearing this fragrance at all. And I really think that this is the perfect fragrance for those summer occasions where you're just wearing a really beautiful and live sundress with some flat sandals and a very casual kind of handbag and you're just going out for the day or even for evening occasions. But this is definitely one that I definitely see myself pulling for the spring and summer, very casual occasions or occasions where I'm just, it's really hot outside and I'm just wearing something really summery. This one for me is a definite 10 out of 10. The next one that I wanna share with you is Cotton Candy Musk. Now I have to tell you, I've already shared uh, for all of these fragrances, you know, that I'm getting around five hours. This one actually gets me around six hours, if not more. And if you spray it on your clothes, it will definitely linger and linger and linger. Now, this one is very interesting to me because I never get the cotton candy note whatsoever. What I get is a very strong violet, period. And this violet is so strong that I'm pretty sure it's probably overpowering what's supposed to be the cotton candy note. But really, I just don't get the cotton candy note in this fragrance at all. What it is to me is kind of like very powdery. It's almost like a powder that doesn't have much fragrance to it. So it's designed to just make you smell clean and fresh. That's what I get from this one. But I certainly don't get the cotton candy note, and I also don't get the sweetness of a cotton candy. If anything, it may be like a kind of bitter kind of cotton candy, if that, but all in all, guys, I just don't really get cotton candy in this fragrance. What I get is a very strong violet, and I have to rate this one a five out of 10. The next one that I wanna share with you, and the last one in the collection, is Mango Musk. Now this one opens with a very, very strong mango paired with a very strong violet. And curiously enough, I actually like this one. I really like how this one smells. This is like perfect spring summer fragrance to me, but I can see myself also pulling for it during the fall season. This is really a very nice and different and interesting kind of fragrance because I know I don't have any other fragrance in my collection where there's a mix of like mango and violet. Now, this one does give me kind of like a powdery dried down, but it's not very powdery. This mango is also not very, very ripe. It is a juicy mango. Um, it is definitely ripe, but it's not like it's tripping with all the juiciness, if you know what I mean. But nonetheless, this one is very, very lovely. And I think it is perfect for either 
a mild spring, you know, like a mild temperature spring day, all the way up to a very hot summer day. And even though it's a mango based musk fragrance, it doesn't necessarily give me a tropical vibe. I just think that this fragrance is actually quite perfect because of its mix with the mango and the violet. And it creates just such a different type of feel to the fragrance. I definitely give this one a nine out of 10. And the only reason I say that is because this one does have that five hour mark where you are going to have to respray it. But you know, like I told you at the beginning, these fragrances haven't had a chance to sit for weeks at a time or months. So I wonder if this is not going to end up being a much, a much stronger fragrance in the future. Okay, so that we're not here forever today because I really feel kind of guilty when I put out those one hour videos for you. I'm going to go through these fragrances as fast as I can without compromise to giving you the level of information that you need. But I will only stop in fragrances where I feel that I really need to expand or give you more information than what I have already shared in past videos. The next fragrance that I want to share with you today, and this fragrance was part of a previous haul, not necessarily the spring summer haul, and I'm sure as soon as you see it, you'll remember that we did discuss this fragrance but I wanted to circle back with you but let's get into the fragrance so I am speaking about Paris Corner Eternal Meadows so I am coming back to this fragrance because I think it is really really worth your attention this fragrance this is such a a lovely, lovely fragrance. I have to tell you, this is perfection for spring, summer, but I dare say all throughout the year. This is a fragrance that does open up green, but it's not like an obnoxious level of greenness. No, it opens up beautifully. And what I really get as the dominant notes in this fragrance are really lavender, vanilla, and just like a beautiful, like, oriental touch to it like an oriental accord and that vanilla oh my goodness there is quite a bit of vanilla in this fragrance and when you sniff it you if you allow yourself to sniff it and just sit with it for a minute you're going to pick up on those notes immediately because they are the dominant notes but when you put this fragrance on your skin the journey is just absolutely beautiful and at the dry down you get like this beautiful combination of sweetness like a vanilla that's sweet with some lavender which gives you like this soothing like kind of calming effect i mean really and then there's like like uh, an exotic twist to it which is why i'm telling you i'm getting like that oriental kind of accord to the fragrance it gives it like an oriental feel type of quality while bringing in that freshness and that outdoorsy feeling of that greenness this is a fragrance that i really see myself using during the day during the night during the spring and summer seasons i think this fragrance is perfect this is also a fragrance that during the spring and summer seasons you can definitely wear to more formal events that go up to i would say mid-evening i don't think that this is a fragrance that i would wear to a black tie event during the summer or spring seasons even if it's outside because this is really very outdoorsy but at that it is there's such a like an air of sophistication to it that it doesn't limit the fragrance to just daytime casual occasions. This is a fragrance that gives me a solid seven to eight hours and it is one that I really consider to be unisex. I rate this fragrance a definite 10 out of 10. So the next fragrance that I want to share with you, and this is also a fragrance that I had shared in a previous haul, and it was not a summer and spring haul. It was one before that, and I am speaking about Cadillac's Harim Al Sultan Gold, but the perfume spray, not the oil.
As you may recall, when um, when I tried the Harim Al Sultan Gold, the oil, I told you that it was like an explosion of fruits. And I assumed that this fragrance would be the same. But recently, I decided to give it a try, you know? And I have to tell you, I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. This fragrance is perfection for spring and summer, and I dare say even more for the summer. This fragrance is so, so beautiful. And this fragrance, what really, really calls my attention to this fragrance, besides its performance, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, is that it really does have a great combination of fruits. And I pick up on all of them. I pick up on the plum. I pick up on the pineapple. I pick up on the peach. Definitely pick up on some peony that's, that's in here. There's like some jasmine in this fragrance. And I love, love, love this fragrance because even though it is to the core, a fruity floral fragrance, there's an air of elegance to it. I'm telling you, this is the type of fragrance that I think is perfect for if you're attending a summer or spring wedding or any type of event, whether it be indoor or outdoor. This is also a fragrance that is perfect for day or night occasions during the spring and summer. This is a fragrance that has a continuous, during the olfactory journey, there's a continuous exchange between the fruits and the florals. It's like one minute the fruits are at the forefront and at the next it's all about the florals, but at the base, oh my goodness, guys, at the dry down, oh my goodness. Oh, at the dry down, this fragrance takes on such character because it becomes like creamy courtesy of the sandalwood and the patchouli but then it's creamy and then it has like the fruits and the florals involved in it it is just an exquisite blend honestly guys i am so impressed with cad lash because what i'm starting to realize about cad lash is that their dna is all about a seamless blend in a fragrance and that is exactly what you get with this one I highly, highly recommend this fragrance and I definitely give it a 10 out of 10. This is a fragrance, by the way, guys, that gets me eight plus hours. And if you spray it on your garments, on your clothes, you are going to have that scent forever until you launder them and wherever you lay them they will permeate this is a fragrance that you can overspray if you like and i did overspray it one day and it, it was just like crazy beast but i would definitely recommend that you don't so that you can just enjoy the beauty and the smoothness of such an exquisitely done blend the next fragrance that I want to talk to you about is a fragrance that was a part of the most recent spring summer haul and most of you if not all of you requested that I come back with a detailed review on this one and I am definitely ready to speak about it and I am talking about Paris Corner Emir Mango Punch. Oh my goodness guys. <sighs> Do I have a lot to say about this fragrance? And I am going to spray it because I, oh my goodness. Oh. Okay, so I have to tell you, and I think I'm, I'm pretty sure that you picked up on it. During the first impression during that haul video, I was kind of taken aback because to me, this fragrance, while it was very beautiful, it opened with a very green kind of mango. But let me tell you what the key to this fragrance, and by the way, Pear Potion, which I did not bring Pear Potion today because it's sold out. So, you know, I, I, I just don't want to put you through the pain of me saying how great it is and all the secrets I discovered during testing, you know, and then you, you can't even get your hands on it. But if it does come back in stock, I promise I will come out with a quick video just telling you all the details about that one. But let's talk about Mango Punch because, oh my goodness. Let me tell you, the key to this fragrance is that you spray it, <sighs> is that you spray it on your skin. This fragrance is exceptional. I am absolutely 
obsessed, ready for spring and summer to get here so I can just use this almost every day and layer it with other fragrances that I'm gonna share with you today. For me, this fragrance, the dominant notes are mango, blackberry, blackberry, definitely vanilla, musk. And then what I love about this fragrance and what sets it apart from every other mango fragrance that I have in my collection, and I have quite a few, guys, is the note of, are you ready? Iris. Iris and mango. Who would have thought? So in that opening that I said that it was a green mango, guys, it was the iris. It was, you know, there's something, I don't want to say pungent, but there is something very uh, dominant about adding the note of iris to a fragrance. It To me, it automatically adds powderiness to the fragrance, but at the same time, it almost like adds an oomph to all the other notes in the fragrance. And that is what you'll find with this one. This mango is, once you get it on your skin, guys, this mango, this mango is a juicy, beautiful, ripe mango. It's not over ripened. It's just on point, but it is blended in this fragrance with that iris that just takes the mango on a totally different journey than anything you're probably familiar with, which is what happened to me. But this fragrance is absolutely exceptional and exquisite. I get a good seven to eight hours from this fragrance and this fragrance has not had a chance to sit. I do overspray it though because I do love the fragrance that much and I just spray it and spray it everywhere. It's like a four, I call it the 14 point spray system that I adopt with my fragrances and definitely it gets me those eight plus hours easily. This is a fragrance that I would use any season of the year, but I think it is best suited for spring, summer, and the beginning of the fall. But this is a fragrance that I'm telling you right now, I am going to be using it every season, a day or night, any occasion. This is an exceptional fragrance and I give it a 10 out of 10. And I am telling you, unless you have a problem with any of the notes that I shared today, if you have not picked this up, I encourage you to do so. That's all I'm going to say. The next fragrance that I have for you is actually a little bit of a surprise for you because it is a brand new fragrance. I don't think I've heard anybody talk about this fragrance, but I just saw it out there and something, you know, between the notes and the look of the bottle, something told me you should give that fragrance a try. So I picked it up, you know, hoping that it would be a fragrance that I would like and that I would be able to bring to you but I did not expect to be on a chokehold with this fragrance. I am talking about Paris Corner Rua. So here is the bottle. So let me tell you, if I had to define this fragrance, I would call it Without a doubt, timeless elegance. This fragrance, this is a fragrance that I would definitely recommend for someone who's getting married during the spring or summer seasons. This could be a wedding day fragrance. This can be a special occasion fragrance. This can be a casual occasion fragrance. This is one of those fragrances that I love because of their versatility. This is such a rare gem. This to me, guys, is all about the lychee and the pear. Now, that is another very rare combination, but here it's done beautifully. It is lychee and pear from the moment you spray it until dry down, even though this is not a linear fragrance at all. When it opens up, it's so fresh because I immediately get the lychee, the pear, and I also get bergamot. So the opening is quite, quite fresh for me. It's almost like I'm having like a sparkling, 
fizzy type of Prosecco drink. It is absolutely beautiful. Then after that magnificent opening that is so rare with the pear and the lychee and the bergamot, then it becomes like an alluring fragrance because I get oud, but the oud is very, very smooth. Like I get it because I pick up on oud quite easily, but it's a very, very almost negligible oud, but the oud is playing so, so well with two notes. Are you ready? It's playing with rose and the rose is a modern, fresh, kind of like dewy because everything about this fragrance is like, I'm telling you, it's like timeless elegance. So you have the oud and you have that rose and then to add some character and like an air of allure, uh, incense guys incense but this incense is not like a smoky incense that kind of overshadows or overpowers some of the notes in the journey oh no this incense is truly an incense smell if you know what i mean without having that smoky quality to it then at the base at the dry down you get like this creamy vanilla and woody notes type of mix but the but but they're like in the backdrop because front and center we continue to have all the fruits of the opening along with all of the florals that we picked up through the journey but they continue to like exchange places one minute we have all of the fruits and the vanilla and the wood notes in the background another minute you seem to like get whiffs of like the florals in the fragrance it is just a beautiful, beautiful, complex journey and delight of a fragrance. This is a fragrance that I really, really recommend for use during the spring, summer, and definitely fall seasons. But this is not a fragrance that I would necessarily pull for winter months. You could use it during the winter months, but I think that this is such a special fragrance that I would really reserve it for when I have a special occasion in those warmer seasons of the year. This is a fragrance that I definitely rate a 10 out of 10. And I would say that this is a unisex fragrance, but it does lean a bit feminine. And I would also tell you that I do get a moderate projection and sillage, and I definitely get seven to eight plus hours from this fragrance, if not more. And I have not really oversprayed this fragrance. This fragrance was requested by just about every fam member that submitted their list of what fragrances they wanted me to circle back and review for them as soon as possible. And I am talking about North Stag Expressions Quatre or Four. Now guys, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this fragrance because my mind has not changed. I'm sure that you remember my reaction during that first impression and nothing has changed. This is a next level kind of fragrance and I'm starting to wonder if even though I've heard, because there's four fragrances as part of this North Stag uh, Expressions collection, but the others are supposed to lean or be quite masculine but honestly i'm thinking of picking them up and whichever one is masculine i just give to my husband because the quality of this fragrance is definitely exceptional let me tell you what i did not share that day that i've discovered through testing so with this fragrance i get a good six to eight hours depending on if i overspray or not this is, like I shared with you before, this is a citrus zesty fragrance that is, oh my goodness, this is perfection, perfection for spring and summer, in my opinion. You're gonna get a very strong projection during the first two hours, and then it definitely goes down to a skin scent. But that skin scent will continue to give you wolves of smell all throughout the day. This is definitely a unisex fragrance and a fragrance that I would recommend for the spring and summer seasons primarily, but in all honesty, 
this fragrance I would pull all throughout the year. And during the fall and winter seasons, I would probably layer it with a little bit of oud from another fragrance or any other fragrance that I really, really love and that I just want to add some of that citrusy, zesty quality because this fragrance is all about the citrus and zesty qualities. Now that being said, because it is quite citrusy, it's kind of linear in its journey. It's not as flat as I shared with you during that same video that I felt about Bergamot 22, but it is definitely a bit linear. I give this fragrance a nine out of 10, and it's only because it's not a necessarily complex fragrance with many layers to the journey, and you know that I really love that, but this could, in all reality be a 10 if not higher because this is an exceptional fragrance i just you know have certain criteria that i use when i'm going to rate a fragrance but the only thing about this fragrance is that it's just all about the citruses guys definitely an exceptional fragrance that I highly recommend. The next fragrance that I wanna to speak to you about today is a fragrance, guys, that from first sniff, I just went crazy over it. And so many of you have shared that you too love this fragrance, and I can definitely see why. I am speaking about Ahayeb Dubai Portrait from La Tafa. this fragrance oh my goodness this is a what i would call a fruity woody with a tropical twist kind of fragrance this has to be one of the most versatile fragrances that i've reviewed recently in preparation for the spring and summer seasons and i say that because this is a fragrance that i can easily pull all throughout the year for any occasion whether it be day or night and have no worries. This is a high compliment getter because from the moment that I spray it at home, I get compliments from family members all the way to when I go out, people will actually ask, what am I wearing? To my nose, the center stars of this fragrance are definitely the mango. And are you ready? I don't know, for all of you that do have this fragrance, have you picked up on the fact that there is a definite coconut note in here? Because, and it's not coconut water, oh no, it's coconut. I am telling you, I could not find it anywhere and I made it a point to go find as much information as I could to see if somewhere, someone would say, it has a coconut note, but I could not find anywhere where it said that it has the note of coconut. But I am telling you, to my nose, this is all about the mango and the coconut interacting with all of the other notes of the fragrance beautifully. I absolutely love the way that the oud and the sandalwood add character and oomph to the fragrance without even being very noticeable. It's almost like the presence of the oud is kind of negligible, but at the same time, it's not. It is just the perfect balance. This fragrance has been done truly masterfully. I absolutely love it. It gets me a solid seven plus hours with a very strong projection the first two hours, after which it becomes a scent bubble. It also does get me a strong sillage, thus the number of compliments that I've received every time I've worn it. Needless to say, to me, this fragrance is a 10 out of 10, and I highly recommend it. This next fragrance is one that I had a very, very positive reaction to during the first impression, and I'm sure that you will remember. I describe this fragrance, and I still do, as summer in a bottle and I am speaking about Paris Corner Tasquine Marina. This fragrance is all about, to me, the orange, the peach, jasmine, for sure, on a base of like an ambery musk. This fragrance does have a tropical twist, and I dare say that they, again, have not disclosed all the notes because I am picking up on other fruits that 
do not appear in the note structure anywhere, such as watermelon and even a touch of mango. I am pretty sure that there is some degree of watermelon and mango in this fragrance. But this fragrance is really, is really all about, oh my goodness, this is definitely summer in a bottle. If you're going to a resort, if you're going on vacation, if you're in warm weather all throughout the year or just in the spring and summer months, this fragrance to me is like a must. It is exceptional. It really is a beautiful fragrance. The only drawback to this fragrance so far during my testing is that it only gives me a solid five hours and then I have to respray because even the skin scent is so faint that I just have to respray. But I have to be honest with you, I love the scent of this fragrance so much. And I also love the exchange of the florals and the fruits that it goes into so, so much that I don't mind just making myself a decant and respraying it, just bringing it in my purse and respraying it. Because at this price point, this is an exceptional value. It is citrusy, fresh, and sweet with like a touch of tanginess, but I'm telling you that underlying tropical vibe is always there. I give this fragrance a nine out of 10, and it's only because of that five hour mark performance. The next fragrance that I want to speak about today is a fragrance that during that famous spring and summer haul, you saw my reaction and honestly guys nothing has changed i think actually my love for the fragrance has intensified and so many of you have given me so much information about this fragrance but i am absolutely in love with it and i am speaking about latafa's mora silky rose this fragrance to me guys oh my goodness I have to tell you, I am absolutely obsessed with this smell. You know, there's been a couple of days where I've been testing other fragrances and then, you know, late at night I take a shower or I take a bath and then a shower and then I have to spray this fragrance to go to sleep because that is how obsessed with it I am. I absolutely love this fragrance. And this fragrance to my nose is all about the rose and, and, and the lychee. It is like the most beautiful rose and lychee fragrance that I've ever tried. And I've tried quite a bit. What I love about this fragrance is the way that they've done that mix of the rose and the lychee none of the two overpower the other and most importantly i pick up on quite a bit of vanilla here and i absolutely love the way that they have balanced out the vanilla with the patchouli it is just such a beautifully done fragrance and at the dry down all of those notes which are dominant to my nose have a backdrop of this very smoothly done musk this to me is perfection for spring, summer, actually all throughout the year. But I also can tell you that this is a fragrance that I would highly recommend for a bride or to attend a wedding or to attend any kind of event like that during the spring and summer seasons. Because this is such a beautifully feminine without being like your typical pink type of fragrance. This is not your typical type of fragrance. This fragrance, although it's all about the rose and the lychee, this fragrance has quite a bit of character because that patchouli and the musk with that backdrop of vanilla in the dry down, just take it to the next level. This is a fragrance that gets me a solid seven plus hours with a very strong projection during the first two hours, after which it becomes a scent bubble. But that scent bubble is quite strong, not like your regular scent bubble. And I would say around the six hour mark is when it becomes a skin scent, but it continues to give me whiffs of it all throughout the day. If you spray it on your clothes, you're going to get even a better uh, performance. And I can also tell you that you do not need to overspray this fragrance, but if you do, you will definitely extend the longevity. This is a fragrance that is definitely not unisex to me. This is truly a feminine fragrance and one that I would pull 
personally for any season of the year. But if I had to really limit it to some seasons, I would say definitely spring, summer, and the beginning of fall. But for me, I will use this fragrance all throughout the year and layer it with other fragrances to give it a twist. This is for sure a 10 out of 10 fragrance that I highly, highly recommend. So the next two fragrances are fragrances that when I first tried them, guys, I was absolutely blown away because they are truly, truly exceptional. And I know that I've said that quite a bit today, but as you can tell, I really did bring you the top picks from all of the fragrances that we've hauled recently where you could consider them for the seasons of spring and summer. So these fragrances, I dare say, I will be shocked if really, if you pick them up and you're not absolutely in love with them. I'm not one to encourage that you pick up a fragrance without really evaluating if it's something that you may like or not, and if at all possible, getting your nose on it. But I have to tell you, the fragrances that I've shared with you today, I would just, honestly, I would just go get them. But these two that are coming up next, oh my goodness. If you have not picked these fragrances up, I really encourage you to consider picking them up and then you can thank me later. I'm speaking about Vibrant Orange and Neroli. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this fragrance because everything that I said during the first impression still stands and honestly, my love just grows and grows and grows for this fragrance. This fragrance is supposed to be inspired by Byredo Sundays, but let me tell you, have you ever tried Byredo Sundays? Oh my goodness, guys, the fragrance truly is exquisite from Byredo, but the performance is where the big difference resides between sun-dazed and vibrant orange neroli. This is a soft, spicy, very aromatic, sweet, beautiful fragrance that is just perfect, perfect, perfect for the spring and summer seasons. And I would even wear it during the fall and maybe even during the winter if I wanted to, because this is a very addictive fragrance. This one and the next one, very, very addictive fragrances. There's something about the DNA of the fragrance, the way it's been formulated and blended. It is just exceptional. If I could give this fragrance a 20 out of 10, I definitely would. So this fragrance gets me a solid right now, six to eight hours, depending on if I overspray or not. And I have to be honest with you, I don't overspray it because I continue to spray it throughout the day because I love it so much. But this is, I would not call this a beast, but it is definitely a pretty strong fragrance. The projection is very strong during the first two hours. And after that, around the hour mark of maybe three hours, it becomes a scent bubble. And it's not until about the sixth hour that it becomes a skinned scent. The next fragrance that I want to share with you today, and I'm sure you know which one is coming up, is another one that I cannot recommend enough. So if you haven't gotten your hands on this one, I really, really encourage you to do so. And I am speaking about Vibrant Vetiver Delight. Now this fragrance, guys, is supposed to be inspired by Byredo. Oh, oh my goodness. By Byredo Baldefric. And I don't know if you've ever gotten your nose on Bal de Freak. It really is an incredibly lovely fragrance. My problem with it and the reason that I didn't pick it up is because I've had a couple of decants of it and the performance leaves much to be desired. But with this one, that is not a problem because the performance on this one is pretty much like the performance in the Vibrant Orange and Neroli. 
I have to tell you, this fragrance though gets me so many compliments because it is truly a beautiful fragrance. This is one that I would pull for any season of the year without a doubt. For any occasion, I can dress it up, I can dress it down. It is just a delight to have in your collection. This is citrusy, soft, spicy, and green. But the green of this fragrance is done just masterfully, which is what I loved about Bal de Freak because typically green fragrances, you have to be really careful. They have to be balanced, right? If not, at least to my nose, they can be a little bit obnoxious and like, it just turns me off, right? But this fragrance, Oh my goodness, it is perfection. I can't speak highly enough of this fragrance and if I could give it a 20 out of 10, I definitely would. You know, I definitely tell you when I think you should run away from a fragrance, but I am telling you that the fragrances that we have discussed today and this other one that's coming up is included are truly all winners. And I will be quite surprised if there's one that you really dislike. The next and last fragrance that I have for you today is Rave Now Women. Now guys, this fragrance is supposed to be inspired by Burberry Her Elixir. And I shared with you during the haul that Burberry Her Elixir is a fragrance that I've had in my cart many times. And you know, I've even had some samples of it that I've used, but for some reason I've never picked it up. I can't tell you how happy I am that I found this fragrance because I couldn't find one of the samples that I had. So I actually went to the store and took a sniff at the fragrance because I wanted to be able to compare it to this one. And guys, this is like spot on Burberry Her Elixir. I would say like 95% the same, if not more. This fragrance. <sighs> to me is all about the strawberry and the vanilla. That like strawberry milkshake lactonic quality that we've all come to know Burberry Her Elixir to have is definitely present here in the exact same degree. Although the fragrance has other notes and there are some florals in the mix, what I get predominantly on my nose is that strawberry and that beautifully done vanilla with a backdrop of the florals. This fragrance to me screams spring. And yes, you can also use it during the summer, but I can imagine wearing a beautiful spring kind of dress and just spraying this fragrance as a finishing touch you will be beautiful and perfect for any spring occasion. I also think that this is a fragrance that would be perfect for the Easter holiday. This fragrance to me is not unisex whatsoever. This fragrance embodies the, the beauty and like the flourishing touches of a female during the spring season. That's just what I get. This is also a fragrance that has quite a strong projection during the first two hours, after which it becomes a scent bubble. But I get a solid seven plus hours from this fragrance and can tell you that it definitely has a moderate sillage. All in all, I am so happy that I have it in my collection. I'm not too crazy about the bottle if I'm honest with you, but the juice is so worth it. I give this fragrance a 10 out of 10, and I also highly recommend All it. All right, guys, so we have reached the end of the video, and I just want to say, guys, that it has been so much fun to be on this Middle Eastern fragrances journey with you. I'm sure some of you that have been with me from the beginning of the journey are like, wow, we've come a long way. Yes, we have, and I am enjoying every minute of it, so I just want to thank you guys the ones that have been with me all along and I also want to thank all of our new fam members all of our new subscribers welcome to the fragrance love and family all right guys well if you have any questions you know what to do just leave it in the comments section and I will surely get back to you thank you so much for hanging with me today and I will see you in the next video